One economics professor is trying to shine light on how tech giants like Apple, Google, Amazon, and Facebook rose to their massive power. In his book, Bit Tyrants, The Political Economy of Silicon Valley, Rob Larson explains how these corporations are taking over more sectors of the economy. And he joins us now via Skype to expand on this. Rob, welcome to the show. It's great to see you. Thanks, guys. Happy to be here. Absolutely. Rob, tell us a little bit about just why you decided to write the book and what you reveal. Right on. Well, the reason for writing it, uh, you know, it's pretty, pretty manifest. Right now, the five biggest companies in the world, the five biggest private companies in the world are all these very large uh, big tech, what we call platform companies. So Microsoft, mm -hmm. Apple, Amazon, Google, and Facebook very rare for a single sector of the economy to have all five of the biggest firms in it. And by now, we're all kind of aware how extremely reliant we've become on these giant big tech platforms, uh, as has been only more painfully apparent uh, during the last couple of days, as we all know. And yeah. the basics of what we're finding, if we dig into the economics of it, is that markets vary a lot. But uh, some markets are more prone to consolidation and monopoly uh, than others. And what we see is some markets have what we call the network effect. This is where a product or service gains value as more people use it. Mm -hmm. So telephones or Facebook, you know, as more people use it, it gains value to others. Well, if you look into the economics of it, the same thing applies to Google search and its data, to the YouTube platform, even Microsoft's lousy Windows operating system. And so the book goes through uh, sort of the, the economic source of the incredible semi-monopolistic power of these uh, online platforms. It's interesting, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, indeed. And talk about, I mean, look, now the problems are manifest and it's almost like it feels it's not too late, but it feels almost like it's too late because they have so much power over our economy, over the labor market, over the information that we consume, over the political information we consume. I mean, just the amount of power that these companies have at this point is so vast. Were there warning signs along the way? Were there people who looked in the other direction? Were there palms that were greased? I mean, how did they get to this particular point? Right on. Yeah. Well, the economics of it will take you halfway there. Once you have that network effect and people are using your uh, software because it's widely used and people develop you know, programs and games for it, that gets you like the market weight. But there were definitely warning signs uh, along the way. And we've had past you know, major battles over it, like Microsoft had its major antitrust trial in the 90s, which probably... Uh, for better or worse, it does give us an idea of what we can expect to happen with uh, Google and Facebook's current investigations. Uh, but there were bigger red flags uh, among the newer firms as well. The one I talk about quite a bit uh, in the book because it's really fascinating was that uh, wage fixing episode uh, in the early 2000s among Google, Apple, and, and right. several of the other large tech platforms. And we have their emails because there was a court case. Uh, when litigation happens, it's good news. Uh, for researchers. And so we can look at their uh, digital trail and, you know, these very idealistic tech company CEOs and, you know, company creators. Uh, we have long email trails from them that read, that begin, do not forward in all caps, and that explicitly say we should get off email on this so we can avoid being sued later. And of course, they were taken to court and paid a moderately uh, meaty judgment because of that in court proven uh, corporate conspiracy. Those things would be uh, warning signs for sure. Yeah, it's fascinating. You know, it, it, it occurs to me right as we're taping this, we just had a couple of days ago, we had the announcement that YouTube, for the first time, it was revealed what their actual revenue was, $15 billion. And actually, Instagram came out. They couldn't be one-upped. They have $20 billion in ad revenue. So, I mean, from an economics perspective, we're talking about the total migration of advertising that used to go to you know, very, very different types of platforms highly concentrated into the hands of three or four different corporations, right? Absolutely. And, I mean, there's a lot that's fascinating about that. Uh, one is that the most dominant firm for online advertising is Google. And it's amazing how it's not just, like, the AdWords software. By now, Google has uh, more or less dominant control over every stage of the ad buying process, from monitoring it through logistics to picking out the... Uh, search words or keywords you want to be attached to towards right. actually placing your bid. Uh, it's incredible. And they really have, along with Facebook, 
and uh, tertiarily uh, Amazon have vacuumed up a lot of those ad dollars that once supported print media and other forms of journalism. Uh, there's pretty big ramifications for that. But also, as I make this point in the uh, chapter on Google uh, as well, it was largely Google that made the institutional decision that the way the web would be supported would be through commercial advertisements and through their you know, algorithmic uh, process, the original AdWords program, that let them put ads on every tiny blog and let uh, small little websites monetize their traffic. Right. That was right. the big thing that made the web covered with ugly eyesore advertisements that slow down your page load times and make the web uh, generally less than its original potential. I think we can say. And so what do you think is the solution here ultimately, Rob? Oh, right on. Uh, well, I totally know the answer to that, Crystal. That's easy. <laughs> That's why you wrote the book, right? <laughs> Fix it for us. Yes, I should have thought of that. We have uh, a lot of couple, we have a number of options. Uh, the one that's happening now, of course, is federal level uh, government probes and investigations. If you look at the history with the Microsoft trial, which we also look at in the book, um, it's very interesting because it has twists and turns and a lot of actors and some technicalities to it. The current investigations most likely, like the biggest goals that they refer to having would be uh, like a partial breakup of some of these largest firms, so a forced divestiture as we say uh, in business. So maybe forcing Facebook to sell off Instagram or WhatsApp conceivably having Google sell off uh, YouTube, although that's maybe a little bit of a bigger one. Uh, on the one hand, people don't want to lose the valuable network effects that we do get from these platforms. The value of them is that we all use them. So right. usually from a policy standpoint, there's kind of a reluctance to go all the way towards breaking up these firms beyond knocking off some of their most recent acquisitions. What I talk about in the last chapter of the book, um, coming from the uh, posture that I do. I think we should consider going a little bit more directly toward the source of the power here and contemplate some form of socializing these platforms. We, the users of these things, people who put up Facebook posts, put up YouTube video, we're the ones who do much of the productive work on these platforms. And so in the last chapter of the book, I look at the potential for us users maybe coordinating with the most important of the staff and the uh, coding workers at these platforms to try to bring them under user and worker control. And that's your traditional sort of socialist idea. And I try to explore at least uh, a little bit of the possible ramifications. Of that. Certainly interesting. All right, Rob, thank you so much for joining us. Really interesting. Thanks, Rob. Congrats on the book, too. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much. My pleasure. Absolutely. We'll have more Rising for you right after this. Mm -hmm.